Welcome to the Green is Good Green Festivals edition. We're here in New York City today at the Javits Convention Center, and we're honored to have with us Bradley Ferrada. He's the founder and CEO of Cloud Farms. Welcome to Green is Good, Bradley. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, Bradley, before we get talking about Cloud Farms, can you share a little bit about your journey, your story with our audience first? Sure. Um, so I started this uh, as a graduate thesis for a master of industrial design program uh, here in New York City, in Brooklyn, at Pratt Institute. Pratt Institute, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, were you into sustainability? Do you, in your household growing up, Bradley, was it like a big deal to be green, or is this something that, did you have an epiphany along the way? Well, so I grew up in Vermont, and okay. so there's there's always a little bit of that around you all the time. You know, there's small farms around. Uh, we had a garden. You know, I was always kind of outside and doing some gardening. Um, so, you know, I kept trying to do that. Once we moved over to New York, you know, we moved here uh, after college, um, and I'd be trying to grow stuff in our apartment, you know, having a really hard time of it. I mean... Vermont is known for sustainability and a lot of great sustainable businesses and socially conscious businesses have come out of Vermont, such as Ben and Jerry's, like just say, yeah, and other other great socially conscious businesses. So you grew up in Vermont, you ended up here in Brooklyn, and this Cloud Farms was a thesis that you were doing at, uh, at Pratt? Exactly, yeah. So explain a little bit about how that went and how your the business evolved out of the thesis. Uh, so I basically had this final year of the program is a three-year program and at the beginning of it you know I was always kind of from my previous college interested in kind of big sustainability problems um, you know I worked for VPIRG canvassing houses you know in the summer when I was in college before for global warming campaign so I was pretty interested in solving these problems and I was in school for design and saw this opportunity to do something to enable people to grow their own food. Hmm. Um, I had had three years of designing lighting fixtures, like product engineering in, in New York before going into the graduate program. So huh. I knew that I could take something with, with enough time that I could develop something into a real full manufacturable product. Uh, so that's kind of what I set out to do in the beginning, um, try to make something that would help people grow food in really tough conditions, like a, an apartment in a city with no outdoor space. So you had a design background. Yeah. And, and a design slash engineering background, sounds like. Yeah. But you're also a social activist. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And those mashed up. Yeah. I mean, I kind of looked at all this past experience and was like, well, I could use this part that I did. And I, you know, I... I kind of knew that if I was really going to pursue something all the way, it was going to have to be something that I was really going to care about. Right, you know? right. It makes sense. And so Cloud Farms was born from this convergence of design and social activism. Yes, exactly. So for our listeners and our audience out there to find Cloud Farms, you can go to www.cloud-farms.com, cloud-farms.com. What is Cloud Farms? Explain to our audience, Bradley, what is Cloud Farms? So the easiest way to describe it is as a personal farming system. So it's a product that will automatically grow vegetables in your home for you. Um, we specifically make two different products, one of which is a hydroponic system. So it's a soilless gardening system. Okay. Uh, and the other is a window uh, installable greenhouse that can go in just like you'd install an air conditioner. You put it into your window, uh, the plants grow out there, it maximizes the natural sunlight that you can get in a kind of an apartment setting or home setting. Okay, so two products. Yeah. So we have the hydroponic system. Yeah. And the window system. And the window greenhouse. The window greenhouse. So you will use the hydroponic system. They're kind of designed to work together. Okay. So the hydroponic system will feed the plants that are growing in the greenhouse. Okay. Yeah. All right. So before we even get, in, get to understanding, do a deeper dive on both those products. Right. Explain, though, why is it important 
to grow your own food or to be very close to the nexus of where your food's coming from. Right. Well, I mean, I don't think many people really know or understand even kind of what's going on with the scale of our agriculture system in general, you know. Absolutely true. How far something's traveled, the energy that it took to to get it to where you are from the farm, what went on to that food, and you know, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, how much water it took to to grow that stuff. So bringing it into the home is kind of uh, a little bit of an educational experience for people. It kind of demystifies a lot of it. You start right. understanding, you know, how how this can work, and you're getting really fresh stuff out of it, uh, really clean. You know, you're eating it right away. And so maybe you start asking some questions about, well, you know, what's going on with the stuff that I'm buying in the store? You know, when was that picked? What went on to that? Is this sort of the evolution from you know, the citizens of our great country not knowing where their food was coming from at all, then getting somewhat aware and the whole Whole Foods craze and buying organic or buying sustainable products. Now it's, this is the, like the last frontier, bringing it in house and just like having, getting it into your own control and not right. even letting anyone else. It's almost a democratization of food production. I love right? it. And you can imagine- Great way to put it. So many people, you know, even in the U.S., like a million people uh, growing just a few plants, the the total combined output is enormous. You know, you're like matching that of of really large farms. It's incredible. You know, just to go back to where food comes from now. I've heard. I don't know if this is true. You would know much more about this than I would, Bradley. When the food comes into America that's not grown here, our ag very little of it is truly examined due to resource, lack of resources by the U.S. federal government. Is that true? Like 2% or less is truly examined in terms of quality, in terms of um, purity and things of that such? I can't say exactly for, you know, those Number, kind of numbers. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, the, whenever there are some numbers about the quality of the food, yeah. it's, it's always... Uh, you know, a sample is taken here. Maybe a percentage is over an acceptable level of pesticides. You know, they'll say, well, actually, we're pretty good because we get about 80% is within the acceptable pesticide range of those vegetables that end up in the store, you know, something like that. So there's a lot of numbers that are thrown around and truly we don't, st it's still not as transparent as it, should, as it should be. And therefore that makes, a case, that makes the case for the products that you sell at Cloud at Cloud Farms. Exactly. For our, for, our, for our audience that just joined us, we've got Bradley Ferrata today. He's the founder and CEO of Cloud Farms. You can see Bradley's products at www.cloud-farms.com. Bradley, so let's go into hydroponics. What is hydroponics? Hydroponics has been around for a long time. I'd say maybe since the 70s. Um, it's essentially soilless growing. So. We've kind of figured out, or you know, companies have figured out, scientists that uh, you know what the essential components are for nutrients that a plant is going to uptake, and so you can buy this stuff off the shelf, like a hydroponic nutrient solution, and you can mix it into just water. It's water soluble, and the plants will wow. uptake all the nutrients that they need to grow That's directly so from the water. So you don't need any soil. So for for an indoor environment, it's really kind of perfect. It's very water efficient. You know, nothing's lost through evaporation or going through the soil, you know, getting right. uh, sent off, you know, run off. Um, and it's very clean. So it's very easy for, for this type of application. And can you explain how, what different parts of the cloud farm systems, like what, how does it all work together? Do we have a sample or something here in front of us? Sure. So here we have just one of the pots. So yeah. what we make is a, uh, the system itself is called Nimbus. And then the Nimbus has these kind of accessory pots that it'll use to actually grow the plants. These are called droplet. So the tower itself is a three liter reservoir with an air pump integrated into this tower. And it's sending uh, water and nutrients up to the plants that are sitting up in these pots. And the pots are gonna just maintain a level of water and nutrient in the pot. So as the plant drinks from that water, 
it always stays constant in the pot and the reservoir will kind of go down. You only really have to refill that reservoir once every two weeks. So it's very simple. You know, you don't have How to much do space does it take up? Uh, the actual tower has a footprint of about five and a half inches. So very small. And then the pots will sit either on a windowsill or in your window in the greenhouse if you know, the greenhouse works. And what are we looking at here? What's our audience looking at here that's in front of us? So this is one of the growing pots. So one of those towers will come with two of these pots. Okay. And these are primarily for growing leafy greens, leafy green vegetables and herbs. Such as? Such as lettuce, kale, uh, spinach, Swiss chard. You do parsley? cilantro, basil, parsley. Really? Yeah, we've grown all that kind of stuff in here. That's awesome. And so, um, this, even to me, who I'm really excited about this, it sounds a little bit hard. Is this hard or is this easier than it sounds? It's really simple. Okay. It's very simple. I mean, it's simpler than, than going outside or planting in soil, you know, because you have to water all the time. You have to fertilize that soil. So in this, all you're doing is filling up the tank. You can take the tank, fill it in your sink, add a little bit of nutrient. nutrient. The, the guidelines are on the bottle. Right. Right. And then... You just kind of plug it in and turn it on. Are there videos showing how to do this on your website? So or we're, we're working on some of those okay. videos right okay. now. Okay, yeah. that's fair. So it's we'll a... have those up probably in the next month. When or so. did your company launch? So we are in the process of launching right now. Launching right now. So this is pretty new stuff. This is very new stuff. How many other companies are doing what you're doing right now? Uh, there are only a couple of companies that are actually doing really consumer level home products. And I'd say we're kind of in a place of uh, making one of the higher end, higher quality products available. This is um, a pretty new industry then. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you do an elevator pitch to a potential investor or just to someone who wants to buy it versus a competitor that already exists out there. Why is your system better than what already exists, the technology exists? Right, so this has been designed to be really intuitive, really user-friendly, um, and kind of visually explain itself, right? So you always see how much water's in the tank, you know when it's gonna be refilled, you see the water moving through the lines, um, everything is very simple in terms of the interactions that you have with it. And it looks really great. I mean, we use really great materials on here, you know, glass and painted steel, uh, porcelain on the pots. So it's great inside of the home environment. When you've tested it, what products grow best? What's, what is this best suited for? And what products do you still have to further develop your system to get better at growing? So we're kind of limited a little bit in terms of what we can grow mm -hmm. by the size of the pot that we designed for gotcha. the first system. Gotcha. Right? So for the size of this pot, it's meant for a certain root mass. And so leafy green vegetables fit perfectly in this pot. So down um, the road, you know, maybe there would be a product that has a larger pot and maybe a larger reservoir to accommodate a uh, larger plant. So you could try to grow a tomato in here, a tomato plant, but Got it's it. going to drink far more water and you'll have to refill that tank more often. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know, what we were talking about when you were a student at Pratt, you did this thesis paper. Yeah. How did you really go? Who was your inspiration or mentor? How did you go from thesis paper to business opportunity and actually not only business opportunity because that's sort of the middle phase, jumping off the cliff and actually doing the business, Cloud Farms. Yeah. Explain that evolution, because we have lots of students and other budding entrepreneurs that watch our show and listen to our show around the world. It's always great to hear the process from a young entrepreneur like you who's just about doing it right now. You're right in the middle of it. Right. So it was never just uh, an idea. I was kind of day one um, making things, making samples, making prototypes, uh, 3D printing, uh, you know, whatever it took, I was making mock-ups. You were constantly evolving Developing, it. developing, yeah. You know, it didn't, it didn't kind of pop out as like an idea that you have one day. It doesn't really... It wasn't Eureka once and that's it. That's, no, you're, you're done. not. It was like, 
I want to define what I want to get out of this, and then it was just kind that's of great. grinding away on that, you know. But that's great because you 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 have a design background, so you have that way to constantly. You had an innovation mindset, a design innovation mindset to keep going there. Right. Cool. And then who said to you, "All right, Bradley, enough." <laughs> enough let's do a business out of this or was it your own was it yourself saying that or did you have it, what other outside influences did you have on that decision well, making you know I, I suppose my my thesis advisor Bruce Hanna was always kind of an enabler for me uh, <laughs> the whole the whole way through that's um, nice it's a good way of saying it yeah but you know I meant for this to get to a, a place of of manufacturability and by the yeah. time I got to the end it was really far along developed and it needed, mm. you know, kind of the next steps. And I was fortunate enough to kind of get myself into a work situation uh, where I could try to complete this and really push it through and work part time and, you know, kind of make that happen. Great. But then how do you go from great product or product that works? Yeah. Knowing there's a market out there for it to raising the money and actually making a business enterprise out of it. Yeah, exactly. How'd that go? So next month, May 20th, we're launching a Kickstarter. We're going to have a $100,000 goal there. Great. Uh, and so all the manufacturing, all of our pricing, everything is kind of set up. Um, you know, it's been a two year process to get all of that in line. And we're ready to start taking pre-orders and do our first production run. So this is that. This is that push right now. Gotcha. And and where are these produced? So some of the parts are produced in China, and we will do all of the manufacturing. I mean, like the assembly, packing, shipping, right here in New York. So did you have to go to China to source this, or you just do this online now? Oh yeah, you can kind of put a request for quote and get a wow. Yeah, get in contact with a variety. That's how of, democratized uh, the design build part of the world is. You don't have to get on a plane anymore to go to China like when I was your age. Oh yeah, that's what you had to do. But now you could just like do this online. With, with different manufacturers in China. Yeah, I mean, in looking at the different, all the different parts that go into this system, it's pretty complex being able to do this right now. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, how, how you would have done this before without having to go there physically. And, and what is this thing we're looking at here? That's just the... So this is called rock wool. Uh, it's basically just like a little wool block that's going to hold your right. seeds right. since there's no soil in right. the system. So you would put this into this cup Right, and you'd yeah. put your seeds directly in there. You could buy seed packets wherever you want, um, and you'd soak that little block, and you'd put it in there, and then just plug this into the system. And, and where's this manufactured? That is from a company called Grodan. Uh, they're in the Netherlands. Netherlands. Yeah. Wow. So they'll supply us with these uh, these little blocks. So hundred thousand dollars. We're down to the last two two minutes. Final thoughts for our audience. Um, uh, in terms of your Kickstarter campaign, where can they find the Kickstarter campaign? And, um, and, and any other final thoughts you want to leave us with today? Sure. So the place to go would be cloud-farms.com. Okay. You can sign up on our mailing list there. We're going to do an email announcement when we launch the Kickstarter. And we're also doing a product giveaway as a promotion right now uh, for signing up on the mailing list. You can find that on our website. Um, on the condition that we have a successful Kickstarter campaign, uh, we are going to give away either two of our growing systems, our Nimbus systems, or your choice of that, or one growing system and a greenhouse. That is just wonderful. And how many business partners do you have in this? Uh, there's three partners with me on this right three now. Three partners. And where do you find those partners? From school or from out friendship? or? Uh, one is my fiance. Okay. Uh, another is a friend of mine from my previous college. And another one is from my uh, last graduate school program. So three program. partners are, are going forward with uh, the, the Cloud Farm system. And it's going to be on Kickstarter starting May 20th. And how, how long is the, uh, the window open for the 100000 uh, We'll be just a little over a month. A little over a month. And have you uh, studied other successful Kickstarter campaigns? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we wish you all the luck, and we thank you for joining us today, Bradley. And again, for our uh, audience out there to find Bradley's great products and to sign up for the Kickstarter campaign and to hopefully donate some dough, you can go to www.cloud-farms.com. Bradley Ferrara. We thank you for joining. Green is good today, and you are an eco 
entrepreneur that's very inspirational and truly living proof that green is good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Bradley.